תודה לנשיא המדינה ולנשיא ארצות הברית. Thank you, President Herzog and President Biden. ועכשיו, קהל נכבד, honored guests. And uh, I've had the honor, it's hard to say these words for over 50 years. I can't be that long, but for over 50 years, uh, and the federal government to help him build the relationship. And one thing I also want to point out is based on the last measurements from other countries, the rate of inflation in the U.S. is higher than it is in Canada, France, Italy, Japan, India, Mexico, China. Why? Well, here's a couple of things. I mean, first off, let's be clear. The bulk of um, the increases in prices last month were due to energy and food. Supply chain challenges are global, and the energy challenges are yes. also global. Uh, absolutely. There's no question about that. But the countries I just listed that have lower year-to-year -year rates of inflation at last measurements, they've all been hit by the pandemic and by energy prices as well. And I'm just trying to understand why it's a higher rate of inflation here in the United States. We are suffering from inflation and improvement. We have the lowest rate of almost every major nation. That pushing the American energy industry is where the answer is here at home as what opposed I, to Saudi Arabia? What, I'm, what, I'm, what I would concede is that the last point I want to make is that deficit reduction is also a very important tool for bringing down inflation. And the president's plan involves increasing taxes on the wealthiest Americans and corporations so we can make these investments that we need to be making. President Biden's overall and economic approval numbers plumbing depths not seen during his presidency or any of the prior two presidents. residents as Americans concern over inflation is placed directly at the door of the Oval Office and its current occupant. Biden's economic approval dropping five points from our last survey to just 30 percent now. The president never had Republicans and has now firmly lost independence and even a chunk of Democrats and key demographic groups who put him in office. President Trump never went below 41 percent and 37 percent was the lowest we could find either by CNBC or the NBC Wall Street Journal survey for President Obama. Biden is also a point lower you can see there than, the Trump, than Trump's worst overall approval rating at 37 percent. Worst economic outlook that we've recorded in the 15-year history of the survey. 52 percent think the economy will get worse over the next year. Just 22 percent believe it will improve. Both of those are survey records. And they're worse numbers than, I have to say, objectively worse times, like the great financial crisis. But Americans see bad times even further ahead, 62% expecting a recession in the next 12 months. Another 6% think, hey, we're already there. We've never seen numbers like this. You can see that shading there is recession times. Never seen numbers like this outside of an actual recession. And just 38% see their home prices going up in the next 12 months. That's the lowest since the onset of the pandemic and a big drop since the last quarter. Now, the most important year over year. year numbers 11.3 on year over year headline that's only two tenths below 11.5 that was the march high water mark in another week and we've seen even more dismal numbers and when we look at these 40 year worst inflation numbers you know 9.1 percent what does that really mean what it means is families are paying more for everything they buy when they go to the grocery store they're paying 10 15 percent more if they can find the things they're looking for if you try to go to the gas station you might need to fill up your car and maybe you can't make it because gas prices are so high more than double when joe biden took office that is a kick to the gut to low and middle income families they're the ones hit the hardest by these policies and these are joe biden's policies everybody knows it and if you don't wonder where the problem really lies just look at what joe biden says every week he's trying to blame somebody different if it really was vladimir putin's fault then it would have been putin's fault two months ago and three months ago and one week ago. But that's not where Joe Biden is. He tried blaming Putin. Then he tried blaming the oil companies. Then he said it's the refineries. Then he blamed local gas stations. The one thing he hasn't done is looked in the mirror and blamed himself. Joe Biden is on his way to Saudi Arabia to beg them to produce more oil. Well, he went all the way to France to be told by France's leader that Saudi Arabia doesn't have enough oil to meet the needs of America. He was begging Putin for more oil. He's going to be begging Iran and other countries. tyrannical dictators for more oil when we have everything we need here. He could just go to Port Fouchon in my district in the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico where there are vast reserves that cannot be produced because he won't give permits to exercise leases. People can't even produce the wells that they have because Joe Biden said no to American energy. He hasn't said no to all energy. He's okay with foreign countries producing energy at a higher carbon emission, by the way. 
if you're concerned about carbon footprint. And what's the carbon footprint of the 11,000 plus miles he's flying on Air Force One to go beg Saudis to produce more oil? He could save all of that jet fuel. There are no solar panels on Air Force One. It's jet fuel he's using. It's very expensive, but he's the one who raised these prices. He's the reason we have this record high inflation, and he won't reverse course.